Hey everyone. So there was a really good tweet at the end of last week from Steve Wade who was curious what people are doing when they use a GitOps deployment architecture um, and how they alert if there's something running in their cluster that wasn't deployed um, through the automation. Um, that could be either a bad actor deploying something into your cluster, which is obviously you know definitely something you want to alert on, or even just a developer who is messing around in production. And although what they're doing might be okay, still usually best to purchase a warning or something in a Slack channel. Um, and what I replied with was how I would do this, which is what I'm going to try and demonstrate just now. So my suggestion was that through whatever your de continuous deployment or GitOps based architecture is, whether that be through customized kubectl on its own or Argo CD, is that all of these tools will allow you to inject some sort of annotation or label onto all the resources. Um, and you could just use the git sha, which um, might be useful over time. Uh, and anything that doesn't have that label or annotation is something not controlled by your automation. So uh, what I have is a repository here, um, InfluxDB examples. This is on GitLab and GitHub. Regardless of that, the username is raw code. The repository, repository name is influxdb-examples. And inside of that, there is a Kubernetes folder, which is a demonstration of how to use InfluxDB for complete monitoring experience of Kubernetes. Now, there's a couple of caveats to the demo that I'm doing just now. And the first one is that I'm having to compile Telegraph from the master branch because of a new feature that hasn't hit the 113 release yet, but will be part of 114. Uh, and that is the ability to take the labels from any resource uh, and add those to your metrics that you store in InfluxDB. So here I'm just saying don't exclude anything and only include the getops.com slash sha label on resources. So this will store all of my pod metrics in InfluxDB and add on this label if it exists. Uh, and the automation to do that is here. Um, feel free to take a look if you wish. Beyond that, I have this Kubernetes YAML. And this is going to create a GitOps namespace deploy nginx and we're going to cons we're going to pretend this was through my automation so i've added a label here called getups.com share and we also have a second deployment which does not have any sort of getups.com share and this is the one that we want to alert on we want to send some sort of message to slack that says hey this is running in the cluster doesn't look like it was managed by our automation so if we take a look at our cluster um, you can see on this bottom tab, I'm just port forward into InfluxDB, so I have access to the web interface. And up here, I have K9s, which is just a 2 tool for introspecting your Kubernetes cluster. Um, we can see that we have uh, our Telegraph nodes, which is the one we built for master, running and collecting metrics. We're also scraping Prometheus targets for a different configuration. We also do some control plane monitoring. Uh, and then all the other regular Kubernetes stuff you would expect to see. If I come up here, we can take a look at the InfluxDB UI. So I can come into the Data Explorer, and these are all of the metrics that are being fetched by the telegraphs. Now, the only one I really am interested in just now is our pod metrics. We're going to filter by namespace, and we're going to take a look at everything we get back. And you can see we've got some stuff coming through. So if we view the raw data here, you can see the collection interval. We can see the value depending on the field. So we've got some log FS, some memory stuff, etc. cetera. Uh, if we just go back up to the calling headings, we can see we have container name. We have this label that we're, being, we're having pulled through by Telegraph, as well as the host, the namespace, the node name, and the pod name. So of course, in a real production infrastructure, I would have wider uh, context here with many more columns, but for now this is going to allow us to kind of look at how this would work with InfluxDB. So what's really uh, important now is that we want to be able to alert when this doesn't exist. Now InfluxDB2 has some really cool features built in for this, uh, 
and we're going to use one of them called tasks which is just a flux script that will run on any given interval uh, and introspect your metrics and allow you to do something. So what we're having here is we're going to see, this is the GitHub's alert task. It's going to run every one minute and it's going to look at our metrics and try and determine something. Now, because of the awesome work by some people in the InfluxDB team, there is a manifest format that resembles the Kubernetes manifest format that allows you to deploy any InfluxDB resource to your InfluxDB instance. Um, now, I'm not going to use the tooling for that. I'm just going to copy it and do it through the UI so that, that we can um, see it running very quickly. But you could do influx package dash f, uh, point it to this the same way you would with kubectl. So really, really cool setup. I uh, will talk through the flux script as I go here. But the first thing I want to do is import HTTP and JSON. Um, so that I can send alerts. And then because this is time series data, we have to specify a bucket and a range to read from. So all of my telegraphs are configured to write metrics into Kubernetes. Uh, because my task runs every one minute, my range is only going to be one minute. So I want to take a look at the previous minute to see if there were any new pods I should be alerting on. And just as I did this through the, um, the Data Explorer UI, um, we can just do the filters in our flux task. So I only care about the measurement that is about the pods. I'm only going to look inside the GitOps namespace. And the reason I'm doing that is just to simplify this demo. Of course, there are things in the kube system namespace that aren't going to be deployed through your automation or won't have those shares. Um, so you should really build that into your query um, or provide a way to put those labels on it. That's up to you. The other filter I want to do here is just say only show me records pulled out from the from the bucket that do not have this column. I'm then going to group by pod name and just grab the first one and then map over it to then send by message. So I'm just constructing an arbitrary object here with a message that says, oh, look, there's something unexpected in our cluster. I'm going to add on the context that I have available. So that's the pod name, namespace and node name. And I'm not going to post this to Slack um, because I don't want to share any keys online or even just have Slack running just now. So I'm going to use rbox.app, which is a really cool, I don't know, fake HTTP endpoint, oh, real HTTP endpoint, but that just takes any arbitrary request that you send to it and then shows you it in a browser. So I'm just going to copy this and update that. And then we're just going to JSON encode the object we created above. And then I'm just going to return this. Uh, and that's just going to satisfy the data explorer. Because one thing I can do is copy and paste this and run it real time as well as through the task. So we'll save this. We can say view task runs. And within the next minute, a task run will show up here to show us that it ran. From the data explorer, we can switch to the script editor paste in this exact same task only, I'm going to comment out the HTTP post because we only want that to happen in a task. And we can see that we do have something coming back. And that's because we have that fake or unmanaged deployment running in our cluster. And if we just view the raw data, we can see all the information that we're going to expect to see on our HTTP alert. If I come over here and I hit refresh, Oh, we don't have a task run yet, so we're going to have to wait for 13.47, roughly. Oh, actually, we just caught 46. Perfect. Even better. And if I jump over here and hit refresh, you can see that our alert triggered sent an HTTP push request to our box, and we can see that we got an unexpected pod running in our cluster in the GitOps namespace on this node with this pod name. And that's it. That's how I would alert using InfluxDB, the Flux language, and Kubernetes to detect unmanaged, unmanaged resources in my Kubernetes cluster. Uh, that's it. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll try and do more of these in the coming days and weeks. Cheers.